Hey, and welcome back to another video on how to make a Discord Python bot. So today we're going to talk a bit about webhooks and see why they are so useful. You can use them for so many different things. Today we're just going to go through two quick examples. First example will make it possible to speak through the bot. So an outside user will just see the bot sending all kinds of messages with your custom text. And in the other example, we're going to write a short script that goes on the web and fetches the number of players on a certain server. Okay, so let's start with the first example. So let's write a command. So we decorate it with client.command. And then we also want to make a DM only. You can only invoke this command in private messages. And we're also going to make it so that we are the only one who can actually invoke this command. Like the owner of the bot can speak through the bot and no one else. Okay. And the function is, of course, going to be an asynchronous function. And let's just call it echo. And it takes a context and also some arguments of arbitrary length. So you write a string. We don't know the length. We allow an arbitrary length. That's why we have this star in front. And what we want to take or uh, do with these arguments is to basically accumulate them to one string. And here I'm going to fast forward a little bit because you can simply write a uh, space in quotes and then dot join in, in Python. And that's basically it, all you need to do. So just write that instead, it's much simpler. It's still cool though that you can use a reduce function. It's really convenient, it's a good function. So remember it for another day, but not today. Just use the join function, yeah. Yeah, basically what I just said. Anyway, moving on. But yeah, this is when webhooks come into play. So let's create a webhook on Discord and then get back to the code. All right, so here we have Discord open. Let's create a webhook for this test server here. So keep in mind, there are three channels right now, and we want the webhook to be hooked to the general channel. Could be anyone, any channel, but we're going to use general. So go to server settings, go to overview, go to integration, and then let's create a webhook. All right, it actually already created it, but we can change it here. So let's call it um, Terminator webhook, I guess. Something like that. Why not? Channel, channel. And then we want to copy the webhook URL. Now this URL is basically, like it's not secret per se, Although, like anyone who has this URL can make post requests. So it is kind of secret. It, like, you only give it to people whom you want to be able to actually like use this and like post stuff to your Discord. I guess it is secret, yeah. <laughs> so what I do recommend that you do, actually, let's just save the changes. There we go. So what I do recommend that you do is that you go to your keys uh, that we also used in the other uh, episode where we define our secret token and then you just add another variable and call it something and then we can use it in here so let me just do that off camera okay with that out of the way let's get started so what we need to do is make an HTTP post request and in Python this is very easy what we need to do is just use the requests library so we need to import this And also install it if you haven't already. If you don't have it already, let's just install it by typing pip install requests. Did I write it correctly? I think I did. It's already satisfied, in fact. Okay, fair enough. So, yeah. And then what we do is we give it a URL, which is what we had before, namely this. And then we want to give it a, and then we want to give it another parameter called data and this expects a json object so what we can do is write json.dumps and then we can write in here we can write a dictionary so give it a python dictionary where we have a key called content and as value, we want to give it uh, the message. 
which is single uh, simply string to output and yeah so this json here is a module we need to import as well which is already installed like func tools we don't need to do anything here i think so basically what this does is just that it takes this dictionary converts it to a json object and this is our payload in our http post request we also need to specify the headers for this request which expects a dictionary as well where we say that the content type is application dot json or not dot json but slash json and if i type everything correctly this should be all we need so let's try it out Okay, so I realized I had a typo. We need to write uh, and, and another parenthesis here, obviously. So let's try again. All right, the bot is initializing and we can go back to our browser. The webhook is already made, so we don't need to worry about that. And let's try this out. So we shouldn't be able to execute the command in here. This shouldn't work. This should not work but let's try it anyway yeah all right and let's try and write a custom message here echo hello there i am the terminator Oh, actually, that's quite interesting. I didn't think about that. But yeah, it did work. Look at this. So we got the um, the message here, which is what we were supposed to get. Like, okay. But we actually got hello because we implemented a line of code up here where we reply hello to hello messages. So <laughs> that was an interesting coincidence, but nothing is wrong. It's working as it should. Let's try something else instead of hello. Echo, I am the Terminator spelled incorrectly. Echo, I have come, oops, to destroy the world. As you can tell, it does work. Lo and behold, it does work. Okay. So now if somebody else was in this Discord, they would be like, oh no, the Terminator is coming. No, it's going to destroy the world. But anyway, yeah, that's the first example. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so in the next example, we're going to go to battlematrix.com and let's just try to find a, let's say, Minecraft server. Let's just take this one. Why not? So what we want to do is essentially we want to keep an eye out on this number right here. Let's just take both of them. I guess it's also useful to know how many people can be on the server. So go to the URL here and let's grab this. And let's go back to the code and write a new script. Let's call this battlemetricswatch.py. Let's make a global variable called battlemetrics pixel URL and post it here. All right, and we also want to note what sort of class, uh, like HTML class, this sort of, uh, I guess, div is. So yeah, if we inspect this, we see that we are in a div with this class. So this is something we can use a module called beautiful soup to uh, sort of look for. So let's just note this. And let's also take note of where in this div this play account actually is. Yeah, there it is. That's the uh, deal we're interested in. So it is a DD tag within the div class. And it is number one, two, three. All right, good. That's just what we need to know. Let's define the uh, div class. Battle metrics 
five pixel div class. Just bind it to some global variables. And let's make a function called check server population. So let's make this somewhat generic. So let's say that it takes server name as input, it's a string, and let's say URL, which is also a string, and then div class, which is a string. And then we can pass in these global variables when we call the function. Let's just make it generic because it's nice. Okay, so let's use the request library for this. So import requests, and then we want to go down here again and make a get request on the URL and grab the text. Okay. If you want to know more about how to use requests and what we're going to use now, which is beautiful soup, then either I could make a video on this and go into more detail or you can look online. Anyway, so let's just make another variable called the soup. And the reason why we call this soup is because it's going to be the output is because it's going to be the output of beautiful I can spell that correctly, beautiful soup source and then let's use lxml you can also use something called is it uh, html5 i think which is essentially just a parser i like to use lxml it works uh, pretty well okay so this just introduced some more things we need to install we already installed requests but we need to install beautiful soup as well all right so to install beautiful soup we want to write uh, pip install beautiful soup and then four very important that you remember the four get the right version so go ahead and do that and also let's install lxml the parser okay so pip install lxml there we go cool and let's import it so import no actually it's it's from bs4 and then import beautiful soup there we go i like that name <laughs> i don't know why they chose that name but hey it works all right so moving on to getting the player count we need to use our soup object and find we want to find a div which has um, i think this is how you do it yeah this is the argument it expects a div with the class div class, which is what we pass in as an argument here. And then what we want is to so from once we found this div, we want to search through the div and find the tag or like we actually want to find all dd tags. And then we want to grab number three, which is Two here because it's zero index and then we want to grab the text from that tag so this right here play account will contain the uh, this essentially here if you only want this then you have to do some regex to sort like uh, oh yeah well only grab this but let's just grab all of it and this is what this will do okay and let's just write a variable string to output and current server population on and let's write server name whoops there we go it's going to be player count okay and let's then post this using the webhook so instead of writing the same code as we did in here writing this code again let's uh well move this to a utility function actually let's call this post data to webhook let's just make it a function an ordinary function it doesn't have to be um like uh, an asynchronous function so this expects something here so it expects this uh, string let's call it message actually and also this is something we also want to make a variable I think or like an argument so we can actually 
use a different webhook in the future, but use the same function. So let's write, I don't know, URL, URL. And then let's call this function down here like we did before. There we go. And string to output. Remove this. There we go. So this should work as before. And now we can use it in here if we import the bot. Import bot. Now, before I forget, very important is that when you import this bot, this is going to be run, right? So if we run this script in here, this will get run and like be run and the bot will start if it, well, actually, if it's running, it'll just run again. So let's do the usual trick you use in Python to prevent this. So you can actually import this file without worrying about this. If underscore underscore name is equal to uh, like the string name, then we want to do this. So this should take care of that problem. If you want to know more about why we do this, then you can find a good video on YouTube, I think. There's some good material on this. But basically, it's just, you know, the gist of it is just that we we don't want this to be run when we import the file. All right. So back to this. Now we can just write bot post data to webhook and keys dot general uh, chat webhook. Oh. No auto completion. That's because we haven't imported the uh, keys yet. There we go. Cool. So let's actually call this in here. So I'm just going to grab this and get rid of this and write check to population. Then high pixel network was the name of the server, and then use our like. Uh, global variables here. There we go. Let me just see, did we write anything wrongly? I don't think so. This should work. So yeah, let's try and test this out. Okay, so we just need to run this script. Battlemetrics watcher.py and let's see what happens. And there we go. We heard that message and the script Execute it without error. So let's go back to Discord. And there it is. Terminator webhook, current server population, high pixel network, 72,844. Goodness me, that's a lot of people. So yeah, that's essentially what we have here. And I guess this will change in a minute and we can try it again and see that it actually does work uh, properly. And as you can see, by the way, the bot is offline. This is independent of the bot. It says bot here, but it really is independent of the bot. You don't even need to have this on the server for this to work. You just need to write this script, uh, a script like this, and use the webhook to post the data. Grab the data and then send the HTTP post request to the right URL. Okay, so that's the end of that example. I just want to mention one more thing, and that is you can actually run this using a cron job, uh, let's say every 10 minutes. So every 10 minutes, you'll automatically get notified of how many players are on that server. So it's not like you have to run it manually every time. Anyway, just an idea, moving on. All right, so one last thing I just want to mention before we end this video is that if you decide to use webhooks together with something like Twitter or YouTube, you could do it manually, but you could also use something else. So if you want to use something like Twitter or YouTube, Probably a lot easier to use a, a website like if this then that or ifttt.com, where it's you know it's actually ridiculously easy to do. Just sign up and yeah, it's almost self self explanatory. So I'm not going to cover this in this video. Uh, I just wanted to mention that that is something you can also use, but this wouldn't work for. Battle metrics, I think. I don't think they have support for this. They, it's probably more like something like Slack and uh, uh, like YouTube and Twitter and all these larger platforms. Uh, so I showed you how to do it manually, but I just wanted to mention it. So yeah, that's going to be it, and I'll catch you in the next one.